we keep extending our geometric proofs. The other day we did segment relationships. So now let's get into angle relationships. And our first postulate, just like the segment addition postulate, is our angle addition. Okay, fancy wording here. D is the interior of angle ABC, if and only if. Measure of ABD plus the measure of DBC equals the measure of ABC. So it's just a fancy way of saying if I add two angles that are right next to each other, they equal them put together on that big angle. That's all there is really to it. And with that, uh, if we remember supplements and complements, right? If, if two angles are supplementary, they add up to 180. Um, so if I have two angles that form a linear pair, they're supplementary. They add up to 180. Measure 1 plus measure 2 equals 180. Complements, uh, if they form a right angle and they're comp that makes them complementary because they add up to 90 now. Remember, complements make a corner, 90 supplements, a straight line, 180. Uh, those will never go away. We got to remember what supplements and complements are. So we have theorems for those. So if we get into a proof and we want to say that two angles add up to 180, we can do that because they're supplements. And we also have properties of congruence. We've already been working with these, uh, but it just works the same way with angles. So for example, I could put reflexive, I could say an angle is congruent to itself. That's what reflexive means. Symmetric, if I had an angle congruent to another angle, I could flip it around and say that angle is congruent to the other one. I can just flip them. Um, and transitive, just like it was with the segments that we did in a couple proofs, uh, if angle one would be congruent to angle two, and angle two congruent to angle three, that would make angle one congruent to angle three. Remember, if A equals B, B equals C, then A equals C. So just our, th our three uh, properties that we might use in our proofs here. A few more theorems. Um, so our congruent supplements theorem. So it's angles supplement to the same angle are congruent. And it makes more sense looking at, at this example. It says, if measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180, and the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180, then 1 would be congruent to 3. Angle 1 would be congruent to angle 3. Because if you look, both of these equations have measure of angle 2 in there. Well, if I, those are the exact same values, right? Measure of 2. So that means 1 and 3 would have to be the same thing. Because if measure of 1 plus 2 equals 180 and 2 plus 3 equals 180, then angle 1 and angle 3 would have to be congruent. So if I state this in a proof somewhere, I can say that I have two angles congruent because of that, those two equations. Okay, and we'll, we'll see that. So congruent supplements theorem. Congruent supplements theorem. Uh, and we have the same thing here for complements, but it's just added up to 90 now. So if I have two numbers, or if I have two angles that add it to the same angle, add up to 90, so 1 is added to 2, and 3 is added to 2, and they both add up to 90, then 1 would be congruent to 3. Yeah, that should make sense. That should make sense. All right, let's try a proof here. In the figure, angle 1 and angle 4 form a linear pair. And measure of angle 3 plus measure of angle 1 equals 180. Prove that angle 3 and angle 4 are congruent. So we want to prove that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Well, let's start with our given right away. Let's start with our given. So I'm going to have statements on the left and reasons on the right. And number one would be our given. And what are we given? That angle one and angle four form a linear pair. So angle one and angle four are a linear pair. And we also have that measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 1 equals 180. Those are both given. So 3 and 1 add up to 180. Well, what else do I notice that adds up to 180? What angle 1 and angle 4 add up to 180? And that might help us to bring 3 into play. And that might help us to bring angle 4 into play. Because I already have angle 3 into play, and if we bring angle 4 into play, that could get us to what we're trying to prove. So let's do that. Measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 4. 
But there's one thing before I can say that 1 and 4 add up to 180. I have to know that they're supplements. I have to state that they're supplements. So I cannot say that they add up to 180 until I know they're supplementary. And it hasn't stated that yet, so I need to say that, state that. I have to say that angle 1 and angle 4 are supplementary or supplements. And I can state that because of my, my given right here. Right, they form a linear pair. So really that's just the definition of a linear pair, isn't it? Definition of a linear pair. Linear pair are, are angles that are supplementary and right next to each other. So now, since they're supplementary, I can state that they add up to 180. So that'll be my third step. So measure of angle one plus the measure of angle four equal 180. I could say the supplement theorem. I could say definition of supplementary angles. Something that I'm dealing with supp supplements. So I like to just keep saying definition if I can. So definition of supplementary angles. You can put the angle symbol with the apostrophe S for angles. And lastly, we have, well, if I look back, if I look back, I have the congruent supplements theorem. So if I take a look at these two right here, they both have measure of angle one being added to another angle. So wouldn't that make measure of angle three congruent to measure of angle four? Because angle one is being added to both those and they make 180 for both equations. So I can say that angle three, I can get rid of the measure now because I'm stating congruence. I can say angle three is congruent to angle four and that is because why? Well, if I look back, the congruent supplements theorem. Or I can say angles supplement to the same angle are congruent. So either way, I can say congruent supplements theorem. Or I, can, or I could say angles supplement to the same angle. Are congruent. So four and three are both supplement to angle one. That makes them congruent. Either way, either the congruent supplements theorem or I can state it into words. That's totally fine. So like I said, just keep getting the practice with these proofs. We also have the vertical angles theorem. Um, so if two angles are vertical, they're congruent. So quickly, like two and four, they'd be congruent because they are vertical. So I can state these are congruent and my reasoning would be the vertical angles theorem. So pretty simple there. We also have a bunch of right angle theorems. So anything with like perpendiculars, right angles, there's a theorem for. So for example, 2, 9, perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. So anytime in a proof, if it says you have perpendicular lines, you can state that you have right angles. 2, 10, all right angles are congruent. So if you have right angles, if you state right angles in your proofs, you can say that they are congruent. 2, 11, perpendicular lines form congruent adjacent angles. So if you have perpendicular lines, you know that they're right angles, and if they're right next to each other, they're adjacent, so they'd be congruent adjacent angles. Pretty straightforward. 212, if two angles are congruent and supplementary, then each angle is a right angle. Well, if they add up to 180 and they're the same, they'd have to be right angles, because only 90 and 90 would be the same that add up to 180. And if two angles would form a linear pair, that are congruent, then they are right angles. So same thing, supplementary linear pair, um, kind of the same thing. So it's, we know that they are also 90. So we could use any of these things now when we get into our proofs. When you get something like this in your assignment, find the measure of each numbered angle and name the theorems to justify your work. We're not going to worry about the theorems right now because uh, we're going to do enough of that in the proofs. So just go ahead and find the, the measure of each numbered angle. So for example, two here, uh, number one measure of angle two is 26 degrees. Well, I know that two and three are complementary, don't I? Because I got a straight line right here. And I know that this is 90 because of that symbol. And a straight line gets up to 180. So if that's 90, these two guys put together is 90. So 90 minus 26 would give me the measure of angle three. 90 minus 26, which gives me... 60.
four degrees. And then the measure of angle one I already said is what, 90 degrees? Because I have that symbol, the right angle symbol. Looking at number two, measure of angle two is x now. So if two is x and three is x minus 16, don't they add up to 90? We already just stated that, didn't we? So I could say x plus x minus 16 add up to 90, right? Because they're complements. And then it's just our algebra. So 2x minus 16 equals 90. Get our x by itself by adding 16 to both sides. So 2x equals 106, which means divide by 2, where x would be 53. But it's asking for the measures. Remember, always go back and read your directions. It's asking for the measures of each numbered angle. So I got to plug back in. So that means measure of angle 2 is 53 degrees, because that's what measure 2 is. It's x. And measure of angle 3, if you look, is x minus 16. So 53 minus 16 to give us 37 degrees. So make sure you get, you get the correct answer there. And lastly, let's do one more proof. It's given that 1 and 3 are congruent. So 1 is congruent to 3. And that we want to prove that 2 and 3 are supplementary. So if you take a look, you should have an idea of where we're going with this. So let's get our T-table set up, the statements and reasons, the two-column proof. And number one is always given. Angle one is congruent to angle three, given. Well, another thing we can do with proofs, sometimes it doesn't state something's given, but it's really given in my picture. For example, right here, if I look at angle one and angle two, aren't, don't they form a linear pair? It might not state that in your given, but it's actually given. So you don't have to write this down, but I'm gonna write this down just so we can see it. So angle one and angle two are a linear pair. And that is also given. So I'm just gonna leave that right there. So you don't have to write that down, but it's gonna help to see it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write it down for us. So two, well, let's use that now. We want 2 and 3 to be supplementary. Well, if we look, 1 and 2 should be supplementary, shouldn't they? Because why? They form a linear pair. So I can say that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. And that is because what? They're a linear pair, so a definition of a linear pair. And remember, I have to state that they're supplementary before I can say that they add up to 180. Well, now that we have angle one and angle two supplementary, we can say that they add up to 180. But remember, I have to have that supplementary first. So I can say measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two add up to 180 degrees. And so that's what supplements are. So definition of supplementary angles. Okay, for four, if I think about this, angle one is congruent to angle three. You see that up there? So couldn't I put in angle three for angle one? I could substitute it in. But before I can do that, so that's what I want to do. I want to say measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two equals 180. Because then I can say they're supplements, right? That's what we're trying to get to. But before I can do that, I have to get angle th measure of angle three into play. Right now it's saying that angle one is congruent to angle three. So I gotta change that into equality, don't I? Remember I said we're gonna do this a bunch? So I'm gonna say measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three, which allows me to substitute in. And that is our definition of congruence. We're gonna use that a lot. Remember if you switch from congruence to equality, or equality to congruence, you have to do that. So that makes this step five. And what I do, I just substitute it in angle three for angle one, because I said they are equal. So we just say substitution. And now I can say that they're supplementary. So angle two and angle three are supplementary. And really that's just our definition of supplements again. I can use that anytime I'm, I'm saying Something supplement, 
or their supplements, so they add up to 180, I can always say a definition of supplements. Supplementary angles. So there we go. You got to be very specific. You just got to be very specific when you make your statements, okay? Because something has to previously happen before you can go to the next step. That's, that's our keys. And like I said, we're just going to keep getting used to that. It's going to take some time. All right, good luck with those geometric proofs.